let's see highest response ratio next the name of, name itself says that we are going to find something called as response ratio and now whichever process is having the highest of this we are going to take it so what is response ratio is um, waiting time plus service time by service time so w means waiting time for a process so far which means whenever you are standing at a point of time and till that point whatever is the waiting time that is called waiting time uh, w here so w is not the final waiting time w is what is the waiting time at the point of your computation so whenever you are computing it at that point you find out the waiting time okay that is w and then s is service time or the burst time so s is nothing but the service time now for every process what we do is we find out this factor and now among all the process whichever is having this highest value we are going to pick it up right so here we are not purely depending on the burst time we are depending on the burst time as well as waiting time so how are we depending is uh, see whenever this uh, burst time is less see this whenever this burst time is less yes that will be having the higher value fine but along with that if a process has been waiting for a long time then that one will get the higher value isn't it so it is, it is tricky but then understand this so if the job is having the shortest burst time that is going to get higher value along with that if the process is waiting for a long time that will also get the higher value so what is the main difference between shortest job first and this one is in shortest job we are all we were always taking the uh, shortest possible job but here we are taking both the burst time as well as waiting time which means if a longer job if a job with uh, you know a lot of burst time has been waiting for a long time then that will also get scheduled right like this and s is the service time which means see this hrrn not only favors the shorter jobs why why does it favor the shorter jobs because denominated it, you know there is service time therefore lesser the service time higher the factor therefore it, it favors the shorter jobs but also limits the waiting time of longer jobs which means it will not let a job wait for a long time because you know because it is having a uh, large uh, burst time with the examples it will be clear mode is non preemptive non preemptive means once we pick up a job we are going to run to completion so till a job completes you are not going to let it go right so that is what it is now take this example and we shall see how to you know how does this one works on this now at time 0 i am going to start it at time 0 i am going to start the process p0 and i will be running it till completion why it is non preemptive therefore at 3 now at 3 this, this process p0 gets completed now if you look at time 3 only one process has arrived by then which is p1 therefore i don't have any other choice so i am just uh, scheduling p1 and now what is it so p1 is going to run for 6 units therefore now the time is 9 therefore by time 9 all the remaining 3 are available 2 3 4 are available now which one should i pick among these that depends on the response ratio right now let's see the response ratio of each one response ratio of p2 process 2 is what is the waiting time it came at 4 and now the time is 5 therefore what is the waiting waiting time so far uh, 9 minus 4 which is nothing but 5 right 5 plus then uh, what is the this burst time burst time is 4 divided by 4 right which is nothing but 9 by 4 i think you will get 2.25 okay that is the response ratio of p2 and now you can compute the response ratio of uh, the process 3 so response ratio of process 3 is waiting time is nothing but it came at 6 and now the time is 9 therefore it waited for 3 plus burst time is 5 therefore divided with burst time right then what do we get we get 8 by 5 right which is 1 point i think 6 1.6 yes okay and the next one is response ratio of 4 you have to find out all the response ratios of the process remaining right and now it it came at 8 therefore it waited for 1 because now the time is 9 and its burst time is 2 therefore 3 by 2 is 1.5 so these are the response ratios of uh, second process third process and fourth process which one is having the highest response ratio this one right 
therefore I am going to pick up the second clause and schedule it. So P2 will be scheduled and how long does it run? It will run for 4 units which means till 13 it is going to run. Understood that? Okay, now the time is 13 and what are the process I have? 3 and 4. So now I should compute again the response ratios of 3 and 4. Response ratio of 3 is it arrived at 6. Now the time is 13. Therefore it waited for 7 units plus its burst time is 5 right by 2 so which is nothing but 12 by sorry 12 by 5 12 by 5 so this is 2.5 hmm? 12 by 4 12 by 5 I think it is 2.5 oh 2.4 yeah and now response ratio of 4 1 is fourth process is here it came at 8 and now the time is 13 therefore it is 5 plus uh, what is the burst time burst time is 2 divided by 2 which is 7 by 7 by 2 3.5 so 3.5 is very much higher right so 3.5 is very much higher than this value therefore you are going to schedule p4 first p4 and it is going to run till how much time 5 units therefore till 18 and then I am going to next schedule P, P3 that is the only job remaining now P3 needs how much time P3 needs if you observe it 5 time 5 right oh P4 needs only 2 units therefore it is uh, from 13 it is going to run till only 15 let me just check it P0 requires 3 units P1 requires 6 units P2 requires 4 units P4 requires 2 units only 2 units and then p3 requires 5 units which means till 20 right so this is how hrrn is uh, going to schedule the process now if you want to see what is the difference between hrrn and shortest job first let's see the gantt chart for shortest job as well this is the this is the gantt chart for hrrn highest response ratio next let's see it for uh, um, the other one as well shortest job first that will give you some insight about it now coming to this shortest job first so initially nothing will change because only one cross is available so I am going to take it and schedule it nothing is going to change and at time 3 only one more cross is available therefore I am going to schedule it nothing is going to change and P1 is how much uh, 9 right uh, at this point all the process are available then if you use shortest job first which one will be sh uh, scheduled first P4 will be scheduled isn't it because among the remaining process P4 is having the uh, shortest one right and then uh, and then what will be scheduled after P4 um, the next one that will get scheduled is P2 and then after P2 the next one that will be scheduled is P3 therefore if you watch it the order in which they get sh they got scheduled has changed right especially this P2 P4 and P4 P2 right so even though even though p4 is having a higher uh, you know uh, see this lower short, lower burst time p2 is favored the reason is p2 has been waiting for a long time p2 has arrived at 4 and it is waiting till uh, you know uh, 13 then uh, you know it is better that you give it the chance the reason is this if a longer process has come earlier and it has been waiting for a long time it is really unfair to you know give the chance to a shorter process which has which came very late right so therefore HRRN is going to have some benefits over uh, SJF. Anyway again here also the same same disadvantage persist. What is this disadvantage? You cannot implement this because you want the burst times uh, to be given uh, well ahead. But then the problem is we cannot get the burst time. Therefore it is also it cannot be implemented practically. But theoretically yes. And maybe if you could uh, guess the burst times by using some methods like process size, process type or static dynamic it is okay you can implement it but anyway most of the no operating system most of the operating systems don't use this round robin is the most favorable one so however these algorithms which are based on burst times will give you the best performance possible and they can be used to measure the performance against the others which means they are they are nothing but the you can think of them as the you know measuring scale so you know this, this they are going to be the you know some kind of uh, uh, scale 
and everything else is measured against it if the performance of shortest job first is so and so your algorithm is going to be this so it is close to this it might be best like that right fine let's compute the completion time turnaround time and waiting time and finish it off so completion time is this so i'm talking about hrrn so if you watch it completion time is see, since this is non preemptive you can go either from the right side or left side not an issue so completion time of p0 is 3 and completion time of p1 is uh, 9 and completion time of p2 is 13 completion time of p4 is 15 completion time of p uh, oh p3 is uh, 20 right p3 is 20 and then completion time of p4 is 15 let's check this P not is three, P one is nine, P two is thirteen, P three is twenty, P four is fifteen, right? And after finding out the completion time, we are supposed to find out the turnaround time. Turnaround time is completion time minus arrival time. So how much is this? Here it is three, and here it is seven, here it is nine, here it is fourteen, and here it is uh, hmm, how much is it? Seven, isn't it? Okay, and then. you can find out the waiting time so what is waiting time here so waiting time is turnaround time minus arrival time which is 3 turnaround time is burst time which is 0 here right and then turnaround time is 7 and the burst time so it is 1 and then it is 5 it is 9 it is 5 uh, right so this is the waiting time and you can find out what is average turnaround time and what is average waiting time and if you want to find out the response time also you could find it out see this what is the response ratio of p not it it arrived at 0 and it got scheduled immediately therefore response time is 0 what is the response time of p1 it arrived at 2 and it got scheduled at 3 therefore response time is 1 what about p2 it arrived at uh, p2 arrived at um, 4 and it got scheduled at 9 therefore response time is 5 and then p3 p3 arrived at uh, 8 and it got scheduled at 15 therefore its response time is 7 and p4 arrived at uh, 8 oh p3 arrived at 6 i am getting confused only between p3 and p4 okay uh, p3 arrived at 6 and then it got scheduled at uh, 15 therefore 6 and 15 is how much 9 i think response time is 9 and what about this one p4 arrived at 8 and it got scheduled at 13 therefore its response time is 5 right so this is the response time so you can find out the average response time as well got it so yeah, that is what i was saying response ratio in hrrn is better compared to sjs okay